Hey guys, welcome back to The Stimulus. I'm Steph Evans, and today we have, yes, another vlog. Look at me vlogging and stuff and things. Um, I get this question a lot and I don't know that I've ever answered it really in depth aside from maybe one interview that I had a long time ago. So today I wanted to talk about my STEM journey, what led me to where I am today. And so our story begins way back in the early 90s in a teeny tiny town in Southern Illinois right near uh, St. Louis. Uh, that's where I grew up. It was basically a tiny town in the middle of a cornfield on a floodplain. Um, like most little kids, I had dreams and huge aspirations of being about 12 different things. I think when I was four, I wanted to be an astronaut, a doctor, a nurse, and an artist. As we can see, uh, not all of those things panned out. <laughs> in fact, none of them did. But um, I always loved exploring as a little kid. Uh, me and my sister, Ashley, we ran around a lot. We lived right next to a big drainage ditch and went you know, crawling around in there, got muddy, got, got our knees skinned up, got grass stains in our pants like little kids do, and it was awesome. But I always remember um, really loving to explore and really having an interest in space. Uh, I grew up watching Star Trek The Next Generation and the original series and Star Wars movies, and I watched um, movies like Apollo 13. And I remember asking my parents, you know, when's the next moon launch? I really wanna watch it. And they'd go, well, we don't really go to the moon anymore. And I'd be like, why not? And nobody really had a good answer for me. And I remember that always kind of bothered me as a little kid. It's like, why aren't we going to the moon? Are we, you know, are we going to Mars? Well, no, we don't go to Mars yet. Well, what are we doing? Well, we have a, a space station that's, you know, hanging out close to Earth and we go to that. Oh, really? I mean, that's cool, but you know, why aren't we going to like, you know, all these other planets that are in our solar system? I remember that really puzzled me as a little kid. Uh, I've always had a very strong love for aerospace though, and, and whether it was aircraft or spacecraft, I grew up next to an Air Force base. And uh, during the summers, they would do flyovers and you get to see all these really cool uh, aircraft. But I remember the moment that I fell in love with aircraft design um, was I was hanging out in my backyard, which is like right on the edge of a cornfield, and I saw this very thin shape um, flying very slowly across the sky. And I was like, man, what is that? It looks like a flying saucer because all you could see was the cockpit. And then it banked out and it was a stealth bomber. And I just remember being a little kid going, <gasps> that's so cool. You know, and just being so psyched and oh my gosh, it's so pretty. It looks like a spaceship and um, just moments like that. Uh, we had the Thunderbirds would come out to the air show every summer that they had at the Air Force Base and they would um, fly over the house. And I remember when we moved to the second house that we lived in, which was a little bit bigger um, and a little bit mildly closer to the base, they would fly over the house and we'd lay in our pool because we had a pool then and they would bank out and you could see the pilot in the cockpit. That's how low they were. And it was just such a cool thing for me. And uh, my dad has always really loved aviation. So that's always something that we've um, really shared. And that's been a big part of my life. And then I remember um, always loving spacecraft. And I was never really sure what I wanted to do. Um, I bounced around a lot in my teen years, like 13 to 14. I was, I was like, well, I think I want to be an engineer. But I was like, man, none of these are really, you know, jumping out at me. It's like, oh, chemical engineering sounds cool, but I don't really know. And I think, um, I know <laughs> it's so funny how this happened. Um, I remember the first time I ever heard what an aerospace engineer was. I had, I didn't hear about aerospace engineering until I was 15 years old, and it was because I was dating this kid, really great guy. Um, he was going to go to the Air Force Academy for aerospace engineering, and I asked him, you know, what does that mean? And he explained, oh, you know, this is what they do. And I just remember having like that mo moment um, where the heavens open and the angels are singing, ha! Ah! You know, this this is what I was meant to do. This is it. I love creating. I love designing things, and I love spacecraft and aircraft. And this is this is what I want to do. And the problem was I grew up in a really small town with a lot of very traditional ideals. I remember being asked, you know, oh, you're going to be a mother and have a career. Well, yeah, maybe and stuff like that. And it was just, well, I, I have greater aspirations than, you know, just being a, ho a wife and a mother. And don't get me wrong. If that's your thing, then you do you. I have the utmost respect for um, stay at home moms because I am terrified personally of having children that hasn't, um, that maternal bug may bite me at some point, but it hasn't yet. And I just, you know, I have the utmost respect for mothers. My mother is a hero um, for raising me and putting up with my crap for 25 years. You know, I just, I, that's not for me right now. That's not what I want to do. And I didn't want to be a stay at home mom. And I've never wanted to be a stay at home mom. I think I would just lose my mind out of just getting cabin fever. There's so much I want to do still. So I always knew that I wanted to do something important and um, I love science and I love math and there just weren't a lot of ways 
to get involved with that. Up until I was about, a, I think I was a sophomore in high school when we finally got our science club and we participated in Science Olympiad and I loved it. Uh, we went to state. Um, I absolutely fell in love with science and it was amazing and I knew that I was going on the right career path. I would take all the science courses I could at my high school. I took like advanced chemistry when they offered it and all the way up through physics and I just, I had some amazing, amazing teachers and I was, they were so, I was so lucky in that respect to have some really amazing science teachers and a couple of really amazing English teachers and just that really, you know, um, pushed me and said, you know, if this is what you want to do, then do it. And I did, and I ended up going to Missouri University of Science and Technology. Why is science and technology so hard for me to say? Um, but also known as University of Missouri Rollo, which if you're from the Midwest, you know it only as Rollo. Nobody <laughs> remembers that the name has changed. And the minute anybody says, oh, you know, where'd you go to college? Oh, I went to Rollo. Oh, so you're an engineer, what field? Like it's that kind of, um, it has that kind of reputation. And I went in as a dual major, as an aerospace and mechanical engineering major. Um, my first year, I joined the uh, Missouri s and Satellite Design Team, or MSAT, which is by far one of the greatest experiences of my life. I'm, I know I'm only 25, but that stands out for me. Basically what uh, MSAT did is we participated in the University Nanosat program, which was hosted by the Air Force Research Laboratory. And what it was, was they selected uh, 10, I think it was like between nine and 11 schools, depending on what year it was, um, to uh, submit ideas for satellite designs and they would select nine or 11 of us. We would have two years to design, present, uh, integrate and test a fully functional flight ready satellite. Um, and it was just, I mean, we were competing against like MIT and uh, St. Louis University and the University of Hawaii and just a lot of really, really amazing engineering schools. And it was so cool and I got such an amazing experience not only because I got to go in front of people and get experience with um, writing deliverable documents and presenting in front of you know a customer, but I also got to watch a really amazing concept uh, that we drew up on paper and that I watched, watched that become tangible pieces of hardware that I then got to integrate and it was just that that really makes that really made me fall in love with engineering and I knew that I was doing the right thing. Um, which was good because I also had my lows in college and that's another thing I really want to stress is um, a couple weeks ago there was a hashtag talking about STEM failures and I had my fair share. Uh, when I first got to college, I didn't know how to study. I'd never had to study all through high school. I was just one of those straight A student nerds uh, that just walked into the test and aced it and had no issues. And that got me through my first year of college with my gen ed courses. I'd already taken calculus, I'd already taken physics and chemistry. So I got to coast through the first year and it wasn't really bad. But then sophomore year, the aerospace courses started to show up and I got my butt handed to me on a platter. And uh, it was really, really just not a good point. Um, I just was, I would have test tanking anxiety because I would go in and I would just start having like a panic attack in the middle of the test because I had studied really hard and I had put so much pressure on myself. And it was just, it was a really bad, bad like snowball effect where I would go in and I, I just, I would stress the night before I wouldn't sleep. I'd go in and I'd panic and then I'd just bomb the test. And in college, you know, homework, in, in high school you can get a lot of homework and that can make up for one or two bad tests, but in college it's not like that. The tests count for 20, 30, you know, however much percentage points of your grade while the homework is like maybe 10% for all of the homework in the class. So I struggled for a really long time. In fact, I think at my lowest, my GPA hit 2.6, which for me, a straight A student in high school was just like, oh God, you know, and I remember laying there at night and just thinking, I am in the wrong place. I can't do this. I'm not cut out to be an engineer. I'm gonna have to find something else to do. But what else can I do? I love this. I don't love anything else like I love this. What else can I do? And the turning point for me was um, my orbital mechanics class, which I can't remember if I took it maybe first semester of my junior year. Um, I had it with a really awesome professor who was also uh, the PI for our satellite design team. Really cool um, guy and um, he, I remember we took our first test and it had a problem um, where there was a rocket that launched off like a moon and I got, we were tasked with finding the, the final altitude and I found a negative altitude and I panicked. Cause I was like, there's no way this is right. Oh gosh, I've screwed up again, what do I do? And so the professor had said, you know, if you can't get it, then try to you know make up a number. And I made up a really bad number and it just went with it and it just, the snowball happened. And I bombed that first test. And I remember walking out of the test and I was talking with my friends afterwards and I just go, man, I just, I just totally flubbed that. I got a negative altitude right off the bat and I knew I was hosed and they're like, no, no, Steph, you were supposed to get a negative altitude. It crashed back down. That was like a perfectly plausible thing to happen. And I was just like, oh, 
oh no. So I failed the test. I went through that semester just sweating it. And um, I, but that, that experience stuck with me. So we got to the final and we were tasked with finding a um, certain properties of an orbit and determine the orbit shape. Well, if you've watched my orbital mechanics video, you know there's like uh, circular orbits, elliptical orbits, and hyperbolic orbits, parabolic orbits. And um, we had to find what's called the radius of apogee. Now there's the radius of perigee, radius of apogee. Perigee is the closest point in orbit uh, around the Earth. Apogee is the furthest point in orbit around the Earth. And I was tasked with finding the radius of apogee, and I remember um, figuring out through some other way that it was a hyperbolic orbit, which means that it comes around the Earth and then it goes shooting off into space. And so there is no um, radius of apogee or it's infinity, however you want to look at it. And so I remember coming to the conclusion that, hey, this is a rate, this is a hyperbolic orbit. <gasps> there is no radius of apogee. Oh my gosh. And I, and I, for a second, I had that panic feeling again that I was like, no, we've been here before. Go with your gut, do this. And I was right. And I actually ended up getting a B in the class, I think by the skin of my teeth, I got a B on the exam and a B in the class, just barely. And that was my first, I think that was one of my first Bs in an aerospace class that wasn't just like a cakewalk. And my confidence really started to turn around then. And I was like, okay, maybe I can do this. And I worked really hard. And I think I ended my college career with a 4.0 and I was like so close to graduating with honors. Um, but for me, that was, I, that moment really st stands out in my mind as the moment for where it turned for me. I was like, hey, you know, this is what I wanna do. Um, another thing that happened was I didn't complete my mechanical major. I had gone in thinking, oh, it will make me more versatile. But I remember looking at the coursework and going, hey, I'm gonna have to stay another year if I wanna get this major that I'm really, I'm looking at the classes that I'm not that excited about. They're all thermodynamic classes and I'm really, I hate thermodynamics. <laughs> so I, I was just like, yeah, I don't think I wanna do this. Um, so I dropped my, uh, mechanical major, I think beginning of my junior year, I was just like, yeah, I knew that aerospace was really where I wanted to be. And I didn't want to give myself a fallback plan because this is what I wanted to do. Um, I wasn't entirely sure what I wanted to do career wise, uh, for a little bit. My junior year of the satellite team, I took over as the program manager, which also kind of functioned as the systems engineering lead, uh, systems engineers, for those of you that don't know, are responsible for doing things like deriving requirements, uh, reviewing documentation, reviewing drawings. Basically we function at like the 50,000 foot level, uh, which means that we see how everything fits together. We know a little about a lot of things. Uh, we're not like subject matter experts really. We have, we work with those. So um, we're not really down in the weeds. I'm not focused on one piece of a project. Like for a satellite, I wasn't focused on just the propulsion system. I was way up and saw how the whole system fit together. And for me personally, that's just how my brain works better. I'm better at um, knowing a little about a lot than at knowing just a lot about one little thing. And I prefer that. I like to see how all the pieces fit together. So I knew I kind of wanted to do systems engineering. So out of college, I uh, put in, I think, I spent eight months applying. I had started like back in January uh, before I graduated in May of 2012 and I had started applying and I had put in like 250, 300 job applications and had gotten zero callbacks. And I finally got two interviews and I got to pick, um, I, got two, I got two interviews and I got two offers. And so I got to pick um, which job I wanted and I, got, I decided to come to Northern California where I had been working for actually exactly three years as of Friday as a systems engineer for a military contractor based near Sacramento. And I totally love what I do. It's such a cool job. I may not be working in the space industry, but I have gained so much uh, valuable knowledge uh, working out here. And I'm so grateful for every opportunity that I've been afforded as a result of taking this position. And it's just, it's been a really cool journey. And I'm only 25 and I kind of can't wait to see where it goes. I know I eventually want to get my master's degree. Um, I'm just not sure what I want to focus on yet because like I said, I don't, I do want to do systems engineering, but I don't know if I want to focus on that for my master's degree because I really love learning about aerospace. So I'm kind of kicking it around and I'm, I don't even really know where I would go yet. So um, I'm excited to see what the future holds. So for me personally, that's my STEM journey. It is only just beginning and I'm so excited to kind of see what happens in my future. So if you have a similar STEM journey, please feel free to share it in the comment section down below. I'd love to hear what your STEM journey has been like. Um, also, don't forget, uh, t-shirts are on sale for one more week only. We are extending it. It is now fourth quarter over time, however you want to look at it. So if you haven't bought your stimulus t-shirt already, please feel free to check out the link in the description. I will include it down below. Go um, check it out. 
If you really want to help support the channel, this is an excellent way to do it. Um, and if you can't afford to buy one, please help spread the word on your social media. Tell your family, your friends, whoever. Um, it's really just been awesome to see you guys buying them and I can't wait to see you guys uh, start wearing them. Also, if you do buy one, don't forget to send me a screen cap of your proof of purchase. I will be selecting the winner of a custom drawn avatar by the talented Rob Cabrera next weekend. So um, yeah, on the next twist and episode. So don't forget to do that if you buy one. Also, if you find any really cool STEM news stories throughout the week, please feel free to send them to me on Twitter at, at stephes 43 using the hashtag Twistum. Twistum will be back next week, I promise. Not pending, you know, no apocalypse or major earthquakes or any kind of other natural disaster. For those of you that don't know, my car broke down this week. Ah, yeah, it wasn't great. So that kind of took the wind out of the sails. But with that, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of the week. Stay well, stay awesome, and I will see you next time.